a power bill that's not so shocking. So this shows that we've got zero usage this week and zero usage last week. Michael Mugabe's investment in a battery bank paid dividends this month. For the first time since installing the unit in April, his house is fully self-sufficient. He expects it to power the home completely for nine months of the year. So here's the system here, and um, what you'll see is that even on a cloudy day like today, you've got positive renewable energy coming off the roof. While Michael is an early adopter, a report by the Climate Council predicts there'll be a flood of households. The report projects half of all Australian households will ultimately adopt solar systems with batteries. electricity, solar. most people would love to have a self-sustaining house. Yeah, we have a home to show you that proves you can go completely off the grid. On the edge of Kailua Town, in an open rural setting, sits a beautiful house designed and built by Ryan and Janet Costello. Much of the house is built with reclaimed materials, including a sturdy steel structure, and thick cedar is everywhere, which insects don't like. They also raised the house, creating a lot of space under it. Here, you will find the entire photovoltaic system powering the house. We wanted to make a statement that you could do solar for your hot water and your photovoltaic for your electrical without having to have a backup from the outside. The Costellos have their own battery backup powered by a generator which is fed by propane, which by the way is clean burning. Completely out of sight on the south roof are the photovoltaic panels, solar panels for hot water, even a mini panel which powers a motor to dry a compost toilet. The house is built to take advantage of nature. The inside-outside design has a lot of windows allowing the trade winds in and nearly everything inside is organic. And when I say organic, I'm talking about natural stones, natural granite, all the woods are natural. Two master bedrooms feature great views and big bathrooms that are total wet areas. The dining area is open to the kitchen. And then because we're off the grid, we have two burners electric, two burners gas. So depending on the system and the day, and you learn to live with nature. The house is not only built to be off the grid, much thought went into the way it would fit into this space. The house is built out of an enhancement of the land. In other words, we wanted to take the land and enhance it rather than just cover it. And it is surrounded by food producing trees. This house is proof you can build beautifully and sustainably. And it just so happens the house is for sale. Ever since the solar system was added to this Treasure Island home, the homeowners are reminded every month about how much they're saving, and now they want to spread the word. Zero. 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 Marge Sherwin and Rose Walton still can't believe their power bills. Right now we're not paying any electricity bills. Thanks to these new solar panels and the sun, they have had a zero electricity balance for their winter home for the past five months. And so when we came down here, we said, Florida, sunshine state, how can you not do this? They also added this solar water heater. Whereas there's a tank on the rooftop where the water is heated by the sun. And they love their addition so much, they will have a meeting on Monday to energize the community. I would like to see a lot more people do the hot water because it's not as expensive. That's about five to seven thousand dollars and you do get a rebate for that and the solar system actually gives power back to the power grid which credits their bills they can use that extra saved up money if they need to switch to their backup electricity marge and rose got twenty thousand dollars in a state refund and thousands of dollars for tax credit Reporting on scene on Treasure Island, I'm Katherine Simmons, Bay News 9. From water tanks that store 7,500 gallons. When you come in here, you'd have no idea that there are five tanks buried right over there. To a house almost completely powered by the sun. Not only means I'm saving money, I'm giving electricity to other people right now. Mark and Donna Smolensky may be the greenest family in southwest Florida. It's not about the money. It's about our responsibility. Just as the human race on this planet, it's about our responsibility. Two hybrid SUVs sit in the driveway, and the yard's free of anything that requires irrigation. New artificial turf is going in today. This grass out here will have no extra added chemicals. Their pool pump runs off solar power, and you won't find any chlorine in this water. This is just a small amount of copper which is going in. I'm not polluting the environment at all. The hot water heater is powered by its own solar panel on the roof. This is a solar-operated pump so that in the next hurricane, we don't run out of hot water again. The couple sees savings with every water and electric bill. They haven't used a drop of city water in nearly three months. The power bill is averaging about $10 a month. 
We couldn't show you that because they've gone paperless. And leaving no stone unturned, even the outdoor lighting is free of electricity, using tiny solar panels on... What I'd like to do is consider this, uh, at the end of time, a zero footprint. In Punta Gorda, Grant Boxleitner, NBC2. Tucked into the woods in Hopewell, New Jersey. In late 2006, Mike officially disconnected his home from the electrical power grid and has been making history and his own electrical energy ever since. Mike, an energetic man, has a passion to find a solution for our future energy needs. All of my power is derived from solar energy. What you see on the roof here is 10 kilowatts worth of solar energy, 56 panels. During the summer months, which is this time of year, they produce 160 percent more the energy comes than down I from the roof from the solar panels at 500 volts DC. That DC current goes through these four inverters here where it's converted to 240 volts AC. From here, the energy goes into these two inverters here which pull energy from the batteries and provide power for the house. So the two of them work together. So when there's not enough solar, it pulls off the batteries and it, this puts out 220 volts up to that. neighborhood, one house is completely independent. That is, energy independent. <laughs> Nominal voltage, 48 volts. These are my charge controllers. These are my inverters. For the last two years, Dave Green, a heating and air conditioning specialist, hasn't paid one cent in electricity bills. Instead, he relies on high-end batteries to store the power generated by his solar panels. When he first cut ties with the grid, he had to convince his wife and daughters to conserve energy to make sure they'd have enough juice to meet their needs. Dad was always saying, if you're not going to use that, shut it off, or only use that for this much, you know, don't you know the sun didn't shine today? <laughs> we need to do this and that. You know, you're always managing the power. But eventually you get to the point where you really don't need to manage it. You know, you have enough leeway where you could go, oh, I left the light on. Well, it doesn't matter because we got plenty of power of, of knowing that if the price of energy were to go up or if gas... When you're as plugged in as this, you'd think the electricity bill would go through the roof. But this homeowner never pays an electric bill ever. Thank there you. you go. That's because Bill Kemp has his very own power supply, a system of solar panels that keeps his home, located just outside Ottawa, Canada, running just like yours and mine. It's called living off the grid. Yep, that means Bill Kemp doesn't rely on electricity from any utility company to power his home. He's completely independent. Two large rotating solar arrays track the sun every 90 seconds, each array generating over a thousand watts of energy, enough to run a large appliance. How do you go from the sun billions of miles away, um, how does that thing run your hair dryer in the morning. <laughs> okay, I, well, it's, it's really very simple. The sunlight comes in and hits these photovoltaic panels. These are like great big integrated circuits on steroids. The sunlight charges a bank of batteries in Bill's basement, feeds into an inverter, a device that converts the energy into normal household power, then flows through the home. And then into your uh, electrical devices, the hair dryer. Long after the sun goes down, the charged batteries keep the lights on and anything else Bill needs well into the night. On a cloudy day, a 1,500-watt wind turbine picks up the slack. Um, it's a 10-apartment um, building. and. Um, we, we have um, deployed solar and wind resources here to um, stay totally off-grid. Uh, we have about 40 living rooms here and um, uh, we also have a water system that is about uh, 50,000, actually 57,000 to be precise, 57,000 liters of um, water pumping system, which is also run by a solar-powered borehole. We have about um, 140 units of um, 200 watt solar PV system on the rooftop and uh, we also have about 10 units of 1.5 um, kilowatt uh, wind turbines on the rooftop so um, the hybrid of the wind and solar is what sustains this building. Even at night when the sun is not there the wind turbines will actually um, generate some energy 
you know, to add to the batteries. At least that could push, um, get the battery going. And um, the, the, the wind and solar, you know, is, is hybridized. So they, they work together to charge the batteries. Uh, the wind turbines, um, which generates about 15 kilowatts of an, uh, energy per day. So combined, um, per apartment, we have a solar um, generation capacity of about uh, 4 kilowatts per apartment. And interestingly, we have solar water heaters on the rooftop. So those solar water heaters feed into the installed um, internal water heaters, which are hardly in use. The 